This is a new series of fan that NZXT is launching. It is a performance fan with a little bit more flair than your average high performance LCD fan. Welcome to Machines and More. So here on this channel, I discuss a variety of topics related to PC building. I have a personal interest in small form factor systems as well as PC cooling and fans. If this type of content interests you, please go ahead and subscribe because it really helps the channel grow. All right, so NZXT, known quantity in the PC space. In addition to their cases and such, they do have an established portfolio of cooling products such as AAOs and fans, but by their own measure, the new F120X, the F140X, and their associated derivatives, uh, these are their most powerful fans yet, and they do have an emphasis on performance. Big thanks to NZXT for providing the fans ahead of the launch for the review, uh, but this is not a paid review. So the base models, they consist of the F120X, which is the 120 millimeter version, and the F140X, which is a 140 millimeter version. The 120 millimeter version will have an F240X, 240 millimeter single frame, and F360X, a 360 millimeter single frame variant. And the 140 millimeter will also extend to an F280X, 280 millimeter single frame variant. Critically, these are 30 millimeter fans. So if you are looking for performance fans in a more typical 25 millimeter form factor, skip this one, uh, you do have to make sure you have clearance for these. Uh, NZXT provides a longer 632 rad screws, which you'll need due to the extra thickness and a set of fan screws in the box. So liquid crystal polymer or colloquially LCP is used in both the frame and the blades here. The F20X looks very similar to the Fantex T30. It's got seven blades, low tip clearance of uh, 0.5 millimeter on the 120 millimeter versions and 0.9 millimeters on the 140 millimeter versions. The bearing used here is a combined magnetic levitation stabilization system plus a fluid dynamic bearing for lubrication. Uh, so the assembly, it feels pretty dampened and balanced uh, without lateral play. There are also high RPM fans with a spec max of 3,100 RPM with a plus or minus 10% variance, and compare that to the Fantex, which are spec at a uh, 3,000 RPM max. Unlike the T30s, these don't have a limiter switch though, so you definitely wanna be careful with your fan curves, and because you don't have that switch, it will often be jarring when you first boot up or start up your system during post. For example, if I'm running the T30s, usually I'll have those in the 2000 RPM max setting because I don't need that final interval and I find no reason to startle anyone or myself uh, when I turn on my system, right? Uh, so be aware of that. The frame is solid. There's no cutouts in the corners. Uh, it, it has a streamlined, complete look. Uh, they use aluminum side panels to fill in the gaps uh, that you might usually see with fans. For that purpose, these look very nice. Uh, for example, the white version here, it has a silver appearance uh, that meshed very well with the NK73 that I tested in. And unlike most fans in the high-end performance space, they do have ARGB lighting. Uh, it's not excessive in my opinion, just corner LEDs on both sides of the fan, which is nice because then you can choose how best to orient that depending on your airflow configuration. If you don't want the lighting, you can turn it off or simply not plug the RGB cable in. Although I will note now that uh, as you'll soon see, it does turn out that the RGB is a pretty important distinguishing factor over other performance fans. Otherwise, in my opinion, there's not a whole lot of reason to choose these over some of the other ones. Your base model will have a separate four pin fan cable and three pin RGB cable. It's very long, which can be good or bad uh, for those with a big case that avoids uh, needing extenders. For those with small cases, you have a lot of extra cable to manage. The extended versions, such as the 240X here, uh, uses a single cable. So the fans, they are interconnected within the frame, which is very clean, streamlined. Uh, the single cable, however, then connects to a proprietary split out cable that will then connect to your motherboard's fan header and RGB. Now the problem with this type of arrangement is that it adds another connection point, a proprietary one. Uh, with the 240X, I actually had an issue with the PWM signal 
because uh, whenever I bent the fan side cable a little bit, it seemed to cause poor connection quality. So I couldn't manage that cable. I think it was just pulling or tugging at the eight pin connection point. Uh, the fan speed would then fluctuate quite a bit. So for the testing, I actually had to channel the connection point outside of the case to make the cable as straight as possible. And that didn't uh, influence the fan signal. But yeah, it's a potential concern here with something like that. With the F280X, I didn't notice an issue with that cable. But this is definitely something I would check if you are getting the single frame versions. And as always, it is a proprietary cable, so be aware of the limitations and considerations with that. How does it work? So for the launch review, I wanted to focus on the 120 millimeter version. And later on, I will have some testing to share for the 140 millimeters. Um, I went ahead and mounted the F240X version, the single frame one, in the N-Case M3 custom loop that I built up recently. And that uses a 54 millimeter thick 240mm uh, Corsair XR7 rad with a uh, 285k which pulls 225 watts. So that should give us a very good indication of how these fans are stacking up versus our more established performance options. Uh, so they're all set up as a top exhaust. The fan's going to have to pull air through the case panels and then push it up through the radiator. And the primary comparison here should be the Fantex T30 because after all those are 30mm thick fans and the NZXT F-Series fans appear to have taken many, many cues from that fan. But I'll also consider the Lian Lee P28, which is thicker than normal. The uh, Also the Noctua A12 by 25 G2. And then I'll show you the results with the original fans that I built this uh, system up with, uh, the Alpha Cool Apex Stealth, which are just uh, more looks driven. At a noise normalized level of just above what is audible, plus 0.4 dBA, looking at the equilibrium coolant temps here, uh, the T30 is ahead. Now, realistically, the top three fans they're practically identical here. Uh, the F240X then comes in around a degree worse than those here. It's definitely competitive, but measurably not as performant. And just to put things into context, a 25 millimeter fan that is not bad, but the uh, one that I would not consider in that top tier discussion, that Apex Stealth, it is well behind here. So bumping up plus 1.5 dBA, a little bit of a shuffle in the top fan position, but you can see the T30 and the A12G2s they're always going to be neck and neck when we test uh, noise normalized. The uh, F240X is just, uh, it's gonna be trailing about two degrees here versus the T30 here. So those first two levels are gonna be where you wanna target a noise optimized liquid cooled system to top out at, such as on a 360 millimeter AIO. If we go up to plus 40 BA, which may be more typical if you end up swapping out stock fans on a more run of the mill AIO or 240, and you have a moderate to moderately high powered CPU, the NZXTs do seem to be at their most competitive here. Now, uh, above this RPM level, I would start to say maybe, hey, you need more radiators or a bigger radiator. Uh, so the performance here may not be as meaningful to test here, but these are high RPM fans after all. So we wanna know what is the performance at their fastest while also considering the amount of noise that they output. So at 100%, these are definitely the loudest of the bunch, about two dBA higher than the T30s. Uh, however, the performance is uh, simply not as good. For reference, here are some sound samples of the 240X. I didn't hear any odd noises. I think overall they did a good job with the dampening. Overall, the performance is good with these, uh, although I think you can see they're clearly not the best versus the highest performance. And I think that's important to keep in mind when we frame it within the context of price. Because if you just want the performance, you can get better performance at a better price point. Uh, the reason you will consider these is if you are after the looks also. So the most recent price listing I have for launch, uh, the standalone F120X 
will be marketed at $45 US in the Americas and Asia Pacific regions or, or 45 euros for EMEA and uh, 85 120 for the 240X and the 360X respectively. For the 140 variants, uh, that is gonna be 47 US or 47 euros on the F140X and 90 on the F280X. So they're, they're a little bit spendy. Uh, for example, the time of launch with the T30, it's coming in at $42 with a single now. And the three pack for 115. So if you just want price to performance, I think the Lee and Lee P28 continues to be a great choice since you can get the three pack for 65 US and it has a fan to fan interconnect. But if you want the lighting and streamlined looks and good performance all in one, that's uh, when I think the new performance fans from NZXT, they might start to make sense. So that'll wrap up the initial review. Stay tuned for more testing. I'll go ahead and leave links down below for the launch. Please like, uh, subscribe, and thanks for watching.